The World Cup is just over a year away, so who will Gareth Southgate pick to go to Qatar? I'll be predicting one year before who I think will continue to perform and impress along with some outsiders that may be able to keep impressing over the next year. So let's get straight into my squad. This is a predicted squad as to what I think Gareth Southgate will do. As the three goalkeepers, I think Jordan Pickford remains, I think Sam Johnson gets in, as well as Arsenal's Aaron Ramsdale. Now Ramsdale did get into the Euro squad, that was only after Dean Henderson got dropped out because of an injury, but I think from how he started at Arsenal, and another year of that consistently looking good, he has to be in the England squad. Jordan Pickford, we've always seen Southgate favour, and I don't think that will change, he always seems to look good for England. As the other, Sam Johnston instead of Nick Pope or Dean Henderson. He's at West Brom right now and I could easily see them getting a promotion back into the Premier League. If they don't though, I think Sam Johnston might find himself transferring to a Premier League team. He's looked good in some matches for club and country and that's why I think a Premier League team might sign him up and it could be exactly what he needs to get into the squad this time next year. In defence, well let's start off with centre-backs and an obvious one is John Stones, Manchester City's defender. I don't think anything changes with him and he'll get in there. Harry Maguire has always been a certainty into the squad, but performances lately at Manchester United haven't been up to scratch. But with a year to go until the World Cup, and probably a new manager at United between now and then, I think performances will improve from him. And honestly, I think it'd take a lot for Southgate to leave him out of the squad, so I just don't think that will happen at all, especially due to the threat from set pieces, and also with his penalty that he scored in the final, we'll have a bit more of that if need be anyway. As the other two centre-backs, of course at Euro 2020, this squad size was 26, so more players could go along. It meant that Mings, Cody, and Ben White were also in the squad. But in a 23-man squad, you're only going to get two more in there, so I think Ben White will be one of them. As just said, he went along to the Euros, but he didn't play in that competition. He did get the experience, though, of going along with the squad, and I think this was with a long-term vision of getting him into other major tournament squads. And then the other centre-back to go along, I'm going to say it will be for Kayo Tamori. By next year, he'll have played a full season with Milan, possibly won Serie A, had experience in the Champions League and maybe twice if they qualify for next year. Ben White has had his experience this year of going to a major tournament as a young centre-back and as Tomori is playing at a high level, I think he'll be given that first-time experience at a major tournament too as he'll have earned it. Connor Cody we've seen be a favourite of Southgate and easily he could be in the team once again instead of Tomori, but Tomori now is playing at a better level and will be about to turn 25 in December next year. He needs to be seen as a future first team player. As the fullbacks or wing backs when playing in a back five, on the left Luke Shaw and Ben Chilwell I think is fairly straightforward and on the right it's time to drop Kieran Trippier. Well not exactly drop but move on, have Kyle Walker in there still but Reese James and Trent Alexander-Arnold will have to be in there too. I'd like to think that this is fair and everybody will agree and even though there is a lot of debate surrounding the amount of right backs and the competition in this position, I think these are quite predictable. There can't be any complaints about these players in the squad, it's just who starts where the debates start to come in, but we'll leave that aside for now. In midfield then, it's a really promising position for England now, where before, even like a year ago when building in England first 11, I was struggling for central midfielders, well-rounded players, not just defensive midfielders or players who are too attacking, but suddenly there seems to be midfielders who are well-rounded and can contribute in all areas, like Declan Rice and Jude Bellingham, who I'll say it right now, now, I wasn't actually going to be talking about first 11s, but by next year, I can easily see my midfield partnership being Rice and Bellingham. And I think I can see Southgate doing that too. Bellingham is looking so good and Rice is improving all the time in all areas. These are two players who can keep that defensive structure we've seen with England, but can also bring the ball out of defence with ease. They've got the technique on the ball, the passing range. Bellingham's got the maturity for such a young player. He also looks really comfortable at a high level for Borussia Dortmund and I think these two have to be England's partnership. Calvin Phillips will be in the squad. He put in a few solid performances this summer and he's proven he's a reliable player to Southgate. Mason Mount will be there too. He's such an important player for Southgate so it's easy to predict that he'll be part of the squad. As well as Phil Foden who didn't play all too much in the summer but next year at the World Cup I can see him playing more of a part in the first team. As for the forwards then, well the two strikers I think are fairly predictable. Harry Kane and Dominic Calvert- 
Calvert-Lewin. For a backup striker, Calvert-Lewin is a great option with his height for crosses into the box. He would definitely be a good target for Trent Alexander-Arnold when he's looking to cross into the box. In the wide positions, well, let's begin with Jack Grealish, who will be a different player in a year's time. He would have spent a lot of time with Manchester City and Pep Guardiola, and this might be what he needs for Southgate to start him in most matches. Someone who did start a lot in the Euros was Raheem Sterling, and he's another player I can't see Southgate leaving out. No matter what happens with Sterling at City, Southgate knows what he can bring to the England team. Next, I've gone with Marcus Rashford. He's getting back to fitness now, and for Manchester United, he's been one of the few players who has shown a bit of form. He's got two goals in the Premier League and one in the Champions League. He's occasionally showing what he can do on the pitch. And with some consistent minutes throughout this season and the next, I think he'll show exactly why he should remain in the England squad. Then we're down to one more player to fit in the squad. It's a difficult one to call, but I'm going to stick with Jadon Sancho. Right now, he doesn't get in. He's not starting regularly for United, and even when he has played, he's not been fantastic. Another year though, and like I said with Maguire, sometime in the next year, there's probably going to be a managerial change at United, and I think Sancho will kick into some form and show why he should go along with the squad. Why this is a difficult one to call though, and one where I could definitely be wrong, is because you also have Bakayo Saka, who went to Euro 2020 and started in three matches. Another Arsenal player in Emil Smith-Rowe, however, it's hard to say that he'll be selected to go to a major tournament, he's only just got his first England cap. The other option is Mason Greenwood, and as good as he is with the goals he could bring into the team, my prediction is simply I don't see Southgate choosing him. He'd rather have other players who are more team players to have either side of the striker. Someone I've been discussing a lot recently is Conor Gallagher, and he's just been called up for the first time. I knew it wouldn't be too long because he's been so, so good this season. And I mentioned in a previous video how I see him similar to Rice and Phillips. He's very good in defence and always full of energy, pressing the opposition and would be an integral part of the defensive structure. I've left out Jordan Henderson, I just see other players having more of a part to play in the first team now, especially with Jude Bellingham in there, it's becoming difficult to get Jordan Henderson in. And also Tammy Abraham, basically whoever is in better form between him and Calvert-Lewin nearer the time is probably the one that goes, and I think Calvert-Lewin just has that edge on Abraham anyway. Leave your predicted squads in the comments and please click the like button if you did enjoy the video. For more insight and analysis, subscribe subscribe to Route 1.